What's up guys, welcome back to the Gaming Careers YouTube channel. This channel is all about learning how to live stream and create content within the gaming niche. Today's video, we're gonna be looking at the latest version from our friends over at OBS, and that is OBS Studio version 21. This is actually one of the biggest updates that OBS have released in recent memory. Apparently there's been 35,000 lines of new code written uh, by 35 different developers, so our thanks as always goes out to the open source community that helped build this great software. And uh, some of the features that we're going to be covering in this video, and I'm going to have to look at my notes to make sure I don't miss any, uh, scripting's been implemented, multi-view, a complete overhaul of audio mixers, including um, surround sound support and audio ducking. Uh, you can also relabel your audio sources now. Uh, there'll be scene specific transitions, vertical layout for portrait monitors, and finally a couple of new themes. We're going to be covering some of those in this video. So let's jump in. So when you open up OBS, it should automatically notify you of the new update. But if it doesn't, just come up to the help menu and click check for updates, and we should be all set. The first thing that you might notice is that OBS's uh, default theme is now set to dark. Uh, it used to be light and you had to change it to dark if you wanted it, but now dark is the default. So the first feature that we're going to be covering is scripting. Uh, this is basically using either Python or Lua. You'll now be able to quickly extend, automate or add features into OBS Studio without having to recompile the OBS software or build a native plugin module as you had to previously. OBS themselves have included some example scripts to get you going, but I think the real benefit of this scripting function is going to come as more developers write scripts that you'll be able to download and use to enhance your OBS experience even further. One of the included example scripts is a countdown timer, which you can use to count down to your stream starting. In a previous video on this channel, we've covered how to set this up using an external program, but now we can do it completely within OBS. So let's take a look. Now how this script works is it sets a text source to act as a countdown timer when the source is active. So the first thing that we need to do before we open up the script is we need to create a text source. I'll quickly create one now called countdown and just set some basic font style and sizes quickly, but we can always come back to play with these more later if we need to. Next we go up to the tools menu and select scripts. A new window opens up and we can see that we currently have no loaded scripts yet, so let's add one by clicking this plus icon. Here we can see some of the example scripts that OBS have included in version 21, so let's just select countdown.lua. If you click on the script, you'll see a brief description of what the script does, as well as some options that we can use to configure it. First, we can set the duration in minutes, then we can select the source that we want to actually use, so this is the text source that we just set up, and finally, we can select the final text that we want to show when the countdown has finished. We also here have an option to reset the countdown if we'd like to. Now it's important to note here that the countdown starts when the source is active. So what I would do is when I'm starting my stream is deactivate my countdown source just by clicking this icon here. And then when I start streaming, I'd reactivate it so the countdown timer starts. And that's it. That's how simple it is to add a countdown timer using the new scripting function in OBS Studio version 21. Hopefully you can understand the kind of possibilities that this new scripting feature will allow once some more clever developers get their hands on it. I really like this feature and I can't wait to make some videos on some of the cool scripts that are going to come out of it. I'd also recommend playing around with some of the other example scripts that OBS have included. There's an analog clock one, an instant replay script and a URL text script all included. The next new feature that we're going to be looking at is multi-view, which if you've ever seen a control room for a TV show, uh, it might look kind of familiar. To enable multi-view, we go up to the view, and then you can see that we can set up multi-view to either take up a full monitor, which is super useful if you've got, you know, second and third monitors to choose from, or we can set it up just as a window. I'm going to set it up as a window because it's much easier to demonstrate. Multi-view allows the ability to view the preview and program screens as well as eight other scenes at the same time. So you can see exactly what will show up on each scene and then you can switch to it just by clicking on it. Or if you're running in studio mode, you'll need to double click on it. Now this is probably more aimed at advanced users and people running you know, complex setups with many different scenes, but it's a heavily requested feature and it's really gonna help up the production quality and make it a lot easier to manage the stream since you take out the guesswork of what a scene will look like. Imagine running an event where you have multiple cameras filming the action. In multi-view, you'd be able to see exactly what each camera is filming and then swap the stream to the camera that has the best shot. 
It's also worth noting that if you have more than eight scenes, uh, you can blacklist certain scenes from displaying in multi-view just by right-clicking the scene and unchecking show in multi-view. So you can choose your eight favorite scenes to show up in multi-view. Next, we'll look at the audio meters and some of the more observant viewers might have already noticed that the audio meters down below have changed. Now, quite a lot has changed down here, so I'm gonna do my best to break it down into smaller sections. Firstly, the audio meters now behave much more like peak program meters um, that you might see in editing software like Premiere Pro or audio software like Audacity. Each audio source now gets its own meter with uh, mono, stereo, and surround devices now showing a meter for each channel. And yet yeah, you heard me right, OBS is now supporting surround sound streaming. Uh, certain platforms do and don't support it, um, but I'll probably do a much more detailed video about that later. Now, having individual channels uh, and being able to monitor them, this allows you to much more clearly see if your audio is clipping and you can set your audio levels accordingly. OBS have uh, written an amazingly in-depth guide all about these new audio levels, uh, channels, indicators, and I just wouldn't do it justice if I was just reading it out. So I've linked it down below. Um, I'll quickly go through the most basic level of setting volumes, but I absolutely recommend going and having a look at this article if you want to set up your audio properly. Now, as you can see, each volume meter is made up of three different zones. There's the green, the yellow, and the red. Firstly, you want to avoid any sources, any audio source at all, from reaching the red zone, as this can cause clipping, which sounds pretty horrible to your viewers. The yellow zone is ideally where you want your own voice to sit. And that's not just your own voice, but also the voices of any of your friends on Discord, TeamSpeak, or Skype. Basically, the yellow zone is where you want the voices to sit. Finally, the green zone is where you want all your other sounds to sit. Things like background music, game sound, alert sounds, etc, etc. This way, your voice will always be heard over anything else. One last little, but again, highly requested change to the audio meters is that you now can rename your audio sources just by right-clicking them in the mixer. This is particularly useful for those people that have uh, USB microphones that have been named something strange by Windows. Hopefully this new audio meter interface is gonna make it much easier to set up proper audio levels, as well as be able to diagnose any issues. Uh, a common example is um, stereo devices only playing out of one channel and you couldn't used to be able to um, diagnose that with an OBS because it only showed you one meter. But now stereo signals will show you a left and right channel. So you'll be able to see, you know, if one of your audio devices is playing up. Whilst we are on the topic of audio, it makes sense to cover the side chaining or audio ducking feature that OBS has added in version 21. Now audio ducking is when an audio source can automatically lower its volume when another source starts playing. So the most common use case is when you have background music or game music playing at a certain volume, but as soon as you start speaking, the music or game volume decreases temporarily to create room for your voice. When you stop speaking, the volume of the music or game volume increases again. It's probably easiest for me to demonstrate with an example. So since it's my music that I want to be applying the audio ducking to, I click the little cog next to that audio source. Next, I'm gonna click filters and add a compressor filter to my music source. Now I'm not going to go into loads of detail on these settings as they're pretty specific to me and my setup, but to get a general feel of what audio ducking can do, I'm gonna set my threshold to match what my music volume is playing at, and I'm going to up my release to the maximum of 1000 milliseconds. Finally, I'll select my sidechain or ducking source to be my microphone, as this is the audio input that I want to be ducking for. Now let's see and hear exactly how this sounds. First of all, I'm going to swap to my desktop mic and start playing some music. Now what you should notice is as soon as I start speaking, the music volume has gone down and as soon as I stop speaking, the music volume will come back up again. Again, when I start speaking, the music volume sound goes down. This is audio ducking. Hopefully that was all understandable. I'll likely do a much more detailed uh, walkthrough of this feature in a future video. The last feature that I want to cover quickly that OBS have included into version 21 is the ability to add scene-specific transitions. What this means is that you can set a transition to always happen when you change to a specific scene. So for example, if you wanted to always have a Luma wipe that takes 750 milliseconds to complete when you swap to your game scene, all you have to do is right-click the scene click transition override and select the transition and time in milliseconds that you want. 
Now, whenever you swap to that scene, it's going to use that transition. You can of course have every single scene set up with a different specific transition. Again, it might seem like a super simple feature, but for broadcasts when you always want to have you know, a sting or like a certain transition when you're going to a scene, it really helps add continuity to your stream and make it look more professional. They've of course added other little fixes and new features into the software, but I think that about wraps up the uh, main features that I wanted to cover in this video. Um, and again, I would like to say thank you to the OBS developers, a massive community of people helping build this amazing free software for us all to use. So thank you, OBS devs. I hope you've enjoyed exploring some of the new features of OBS with me. If you have enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you're new around here, please have a look around at the massive amount of videos that we're creating, all teaching you how to live stream and create content within the gaming niche. Subscribers, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.